ಸುಪ್ರೀ and he possesses all mystic power to conquer the minds of his devotees and give pleasure to their hearts he appears in different incarnations and manifests many past lives so proper by shila prabhu shila jiva goswami has translated this verse as follows the supreme personality of godhead is the cause of all causes so prabhu is saying that jiva goswami this commentary on this verse that what's the meaning of this verse is that krishna krishna the supreme lord he is the cause of all causes sarva karana karanam it is by his will that gross and subtle ingredients interact he appears in various incarnations just to please the hearts of his pure devotees for example the supreme lord appeared in the transcendental incarnation of lord varaha the poor just to please his devotees by lifting the planet earth from the garbhadaka ocean so jila shila jiva goswami is saying you know something to think about right that who has created who has created the earth the water fire ether who has created the mind intelligence all seeko so it is god who has created and all the and he comes in different incarnations different forms for the pleasure of his devotees so what are some of the forms that the lord comes in like here is mentioned varaha lord varaha came because the earth was inside the water and you know the devotee started praying to him so he took a suitable form so Do you all remember any other incarnations? Vamandev. Vamandev. Yeah. Matsya was to help to, to protect Manu and all all this all the Vedas, yeah. yeah. And you can see like how the Lord also came as Lord Nishinga Dev. We were just singing Lord Nishinga prayers. Yes. So to protect Pralad Maharaj, Pralad. so we can see that really he's so so kind. You know, he's so. like how the devotees want to see him how they want to reciprocate him he is taking that form for the pleasure of his devotees yanna mashutam anukirtayet akasma yatna mushutam anukirtayet akasma ಅಶೇಷಮನ್ಯಂ Even if he be distressed or degraded, any person who chants the holy name of the Lord, having heard it from a bona fide spiritual master, is immediately purified. even if he chants the lord's name jokingly or by chance he 
and anyone who hears him are free from all sins. Therefore, how can anyone seeking disentanglement from the material flutters avoid chanting the name of Lord Shesha, of whom else should one take shelter? So the, the glories of the Lord's names are being sung here. I'm just going to see in what context it is because you are reading after so long. So this is the glories of Lord Ananta. Sukadev Goswami. Yeah. Lord Ananta Shesha and Sukadev Goswami is speaking to Maharaj Parikshit. Uh, the glories of uh, Ananta Dev. And we had read that on his thousands of hoods, there are all these uh, universes are there. And then Rudra is coming from between his eyebrows. He gets upset that we are, we are not listening. We are not going back home, back to God here. Rudra comes, yeah. So we just finished 11. That was the glories of chanting the holy name. So going on to 12. Murdhani arpitam anuvat Murdhani <laughs> Because the Lord is unlimited, no one can estimate his power. This entire universe filled with its many great mountains, rivers, oceans, trees, and living entities is resting just like an atom on one of its many thousands of hoods. Is there anyone even with thousands of tongues who can describe his glories? So Sukadev Goswami is telling to Maharaj Pariksha how the Lord is unlimited. Cannot even estimate his power. Well, how much power does he have? And this this earth is so big for us. You know, we go from one country to another. It takes us like, oh, oh, wow. You know, just one country to another in this one planet earth. Like that, there are how many planets in one universe? And then how many universes are there in the entire material world? And they are just like atoms on the hood of Lord Ananta. So Sukadev Goswami is saying, how can even one describe his glories even with thousands and thousands of tongues? Evam prabhavo bhagavan ananto Evam prabhavo bhagavan ananto Duranta viryo rugona nubhava Duranta viryo rugona nubhava Mule rasaya stita atma tantra. Mule rasaya stita atma tantra. Yolila yas shamam stita ye bibharti. Yolila yas shamam stita ye bibharti. There is no end to the great and glorious qualities of that powerful Lord Ananta Dev. Indeed, his prowess is unlimited. Though self-sufficient, he himself is the support of everything. He resides beneath the lower planetary systems and easily sustains the entire universe. So Sukadev Goswami is telling us where is Lord Ananta is beneath the lower planetary systems. The, the upper, middle, and lower planetary system. So Ananta Shesh is right at the bottom. So, though he's self sufficient, he himself is the support of everything. He's Atmaram, he doesn't need anything. And he supports everyone else.
My dear King, as I've heard, it, heard of it from my spiritual master, I have fully described to you the creation of this material world according to the fruit of activities and desires of the conditioned souls, those conditioned souls who are full of material desires, achieve various situations in different planetary systems, and in this way they live within this material creation. So here Sukadev Goswami is saying, uh, he's saying, I'm telling to you, my king, oh dear king, as I've heard it from my spiritual master, so Sukadev Goswami, he's giving, showing us the importance of hearing it from authority, hearing it in the disciplic succession. Sukadev Goswami heard it from his spiritual master and he's repeating the same thing. So, and the, the reason of creation. So the creation is happening because of our karma and our desires. And based on our desires and our activities, we are getting uh, positions or bodies or situations in different different planets, different different universes. In this regard, Shila Bhakti Manoj Thakur sings, Nadi karma phale padi bhava bhava nava jale tari bare na dekhi upai My Lord, I do not know when I commenced my material life, but I can certainly experience that I have fallen in the deep ocean of nations. Now I can also see that there is no other way to get out of it than to take shelter of your lotus feet. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying, he's saying, I don't know when I've come to this material world. No, we don't know when did we start getting this material body because we are souls. You're not supposed to be here. So Bhattivinu Thakur, he is, of course, he is a transcendental personality, but he's taking our position. He's, he's not in the material world. He's transcendental, but he's taking our position. That how he's telling us, how, how can we get out of here? take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Krishna also says that in Bhagavad Gita, no? Does anyone remember that, uh, that Krishna is saying that how to get out of the material world? Is it the Samarpan one that you... That you... Yes. Chapter 7. Devi Hiyasha Gunamaya. The Gunamaya. <laughs> So, take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna to help us get out of this material world. Similarly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offers the following prayer. Ayi nanda tanuja kinkaram patitam mam vishame bhavam buddha kripayatava pad pankaja sthita duli sadarsham vichintai My dear Lord, son of Nanda Maharaj, I am your eternal servant. Somehow or other, I have fallen into this ocean of nations. Kindly, therefore, save me from this horrible condition of materialistic life. So in the Shikshashtaka prayers, Lord Chaitanya is teaching us. He's teaching us how to pray to Krishna in this verse. That I am your eternal servant. Somehow the other have come here. And he's saying, Brajendranandan Krishna. Son of Nanda Maharaj, Krishna and Vrindavan. So he's saying, kindly, kindly save me from this ocean of material existence. Because we are not able to understand that this is horrible material existence. We are enjoying here. We are very attached. We are very how, uh, attracted by the glitter of this ocean, of this material world. 
So we are not able to understand, oh, this is a horrible condition. But the pure devotee he is able to understand. And Lord Chaitanya is showing us the mood of the pure devotee. And he is teaching us that we may not be able to understand, but we can repeat these prayers for our purification to help us and pray to Krishna in this way. Comments, questions? So do we need to stop here? I'm not sure. I mean, if you can, we can do it. Yeah. yeah. If you have time, yeah. Yeah, we can continue. We can if you are okay. Some. Yeah, we can read a few, little bit more then. Okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So she, uh, uh, Shukdev Goswami heard, I mean, uh, he, he got this knowledge from his spiritual guru, that is his father, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So we can see Bhagavatam, we are hearing, we are hearing from yeah. the proper authority. Hmm. Yeah. So, Etavati hi rajan pumsa prabriti lakshana sya dharma sya vipaka. Etavati hi rajan pumsa prabriti lakshana sya dharma sya vipaka. Jataya ucha vacha kim anyat katha yama iti. My dear King, I have thus described how people generally act according to their different desires and as a result get different types of bodies in higher or lower planets. You inquired of these things from me and I have explained to you whatever I have heard from authorities. What shall I speak of now? Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 5th Canto, 25th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Glories of Lord Ananta. So what are a few things that strike anyone of this, of what we just heard in this text? Like because of our desires, how mm -hmm. we are impacted and we are not able to get out of this material world. Mm, how we fall true. into it and we're not able to get out of it and how we get the uh, the different positions upper or the lower planetary system we are born in the it is because of our desires and the work that we do that's right and so then with our desire and our work we can get either a higher body or a lower body we can go to animal body or we could get demigod body or we could get spiritual body also. And what is one more important thing that he's saying? Yeah. Because you asked me all these things, so I'm telling you. Yeah. Is it? And is he speaking from his own mental speculation? No, how he heard mm -hmm. from his Guru Dev. Yeah. Yes. That's what, as he has heard from authority, mm. it's very important to hear from the authority. And so now he's asking for Maharaj Parikshit, okay, now what you would like to speak of? Chapter 26, a description of the hellish planets. The 26th chapter describes how a sinful man goes to different hells, where he's punished in various ways by the assistance of Yamaraj. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 327, Prakrite kriyamanani gune karmani sarvashaha ahankara vimodatma kartaham iti manyate. The bewildered spirit soul, under the influence of the three modes of material nature, thinks himself to be the doer of activities which are in actuality carried out by nature. So Krishna is saying this to Arjuna and Bhagavad Gita. The foolish person thinks. He's independent of any law. He thinks there is no God or regulative principle that he can do whatever he likes. That's what we think. You know, we think, oh, I'm free. 
I'm independent. Nobody can tell me what to do. I can do whatever I like. But we are forced by the modes of nature. The modes control us. So thus he engages in different sinful activities and as a result he's put into different hellish conditions, life after life, to be punished by the laws of nature. The basic principle of his suffering is that he foolishly thinks himself independent, although he's strictly under the control of the laws of material nature. These laws act due to the influence of the three modes of, material, of nature and therefore each human being also works under three different types of influences. So, so what the law of material nature, how do they control any living entity, uh, the human being? How does it control? By a pap karma. Huh? By the, the sinful activities that we do, the results yeah. we are sent to the yeah. we are controlled by the planet. Nature. Three modes of nature, that's right. That's how Maybe material nature. Right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Gunamai, the three modes of nature, that's how we are controlled. Okay, the karta. So so hmm? I'm sorry. No, 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 I was just rereading it. Yeah. Ah, hmm. According to how he acts, he suffers different reactions in his next life or in this life. So every action has a uh, Reaction. Mm -hmm. Religious persons act differently from atheists and therefore they suffer different reactions. So Kadev Goswami describes the following 28 healths. The 28 healths. Tamsara, Andha Tamsara, Raurava, Maha Raurava, Kumbhipaka, Kala Sutra, Asi Patravan, Sukar. Mukha, Sukara Mukha, Andakupa, Krimi Bhojana, Sandamsha, Tapta Surmi, Vajra Kantaka Shal Mali, Vaitarani, Pyoda, Pyoda, how do you say? Pyoda, Puyod, 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 thank you, Pranarodha. Vishasan, Lala Bhaksha, Sara Me Yadan, Avichi, Aya Pana, Shara Kardama, Rakshogana Bojan, Sula Prota, Danda Sukha, Avata Nirodhana, Paryavartana, and Suchi Mukha. A person who steals another's money, wife or possessions is put into the hell known as Tamsira. So there's 28 different hells. We say hellish planets. So Sukadev Goswami is going to speak of these 28 hells. So steals another's money, wife or possessions is put into a hell known as Tamsira. A man who tricks someone and enjoys his wife is put into the extremely hellish condition known as under Tamsera, a foolish person absorbed in the bodily concept of life, who on the basis of this principle maintains himself or his wife and children by committing violence against other living entities, is put into the hell known as Aurora. <laughs> so the different hells that we are sent to for our different sinful activities. They're the animals he killed take birth as creatures called Rurus and cause great suffering for him. Those who kill different animals and birds and then cook them are put by the agents of Yamaraj into the hell known as Kumbhipaka, where they are boil, boiled in oil. A person who kills a Brahmana is put into the hell known as Kala Sutra, where the land perfectly level and made of copper is as hot as an oven. The killer of a Brahmana burns in that land for many years. One who does not follow scriptural injunctions, but who does everything whimsically or follows some rascal, is put into a hell known as Asip Patravan, a government official who poorly administers justice or who punishes an innocent man 
is taken by the assistance of Yamaraj to the hell known as Sukara Mukha, where he is mercilessly beaten. God has given advanced consciousness to the human being, therefore he can feel the suffering and happiness of other living beings. The human being bereft of his conscience, however, is prone to cause suffering for other living beings. The assistance of Yamaraj puts such a person into the hell known as Andhakupa, where he receives proper punishment from his victims. Any person who does not receive or feed a guest properly, but who personally enjoys eating, is put into the hell known as Krimi Bhojan. There an unlimited number of worms and insects continuously bite him. A thief is put into the hell known as Sand Sandamsha, a person who has sexual relations with a woman who is not to be enjoyed is put into the hell known as Tapta Surmi. A person who enjoys sexual relations with animals is put into the hell known as Vajra Kantaka Shal Mali. A person born into an aristocratic or highly placed family but who does not act accordingly is put into the hellish trench of blood, pus, and urine called the Vaitar, Vaitaran River. One who lives like an animal is put into the hell called Puyoda, a person who mercilessly kills animals in the forest without sanction, is put into the hell called Pranarodha, a person who kills animals in the name of religious sacrifice, is put into the hell named Vishasan, a man who forces his wife to drink his semen is put into the hell called Lala Bhaksha. One who sets a fire or administers poison to kill someone is put into the hell known as Sara Meyadana. A man who earns his livelihood by bearing false witness is put into the hell known as Avichi. Uh, a person... Uh, Sorry, a person addicted to drinking wine is put into the hell named Ayapan. One who violates etiquette by not showing proper respect to superiors is put into the hell known as Sharakardama. A person who sacrifices human beings to bear up is put into the hell called Rakshogan Bojan. A person who kills pet animals is put into the hell called Shula Prota, a person who gives trouble to others, is put into the hell known as Dandashukha. One who imprisons a living entity within a cave is put into the hell known as Avat Nirodhan, a person who shows unwarranted wrath toward a guest in his house, is put into the hell called Paryavartana, a person maddened by possessing riches and thus deeply absorbed in thinking of how to collect money is put into the hell known as Suchi Mukha, after describing the hellish planet, Sukadev Goswami describes how pious persons are elevated to the highest planetary system where the demigods live and how they then come back again to this earth when the results of their pious activities are finished. Finally, he describes the universal form of the Lord and glorifies the Lord's activities. So this is what we are going to read in this chapter. Wow. So, so scary. <laughs> huh? Scary, right? Yeah, so scary. Like even the so small things that are, that we don't even consider sometimes. Like, you know, like how so many people come and sometimes they don't want to. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, so many things. So we are going to hear about it in a bit more detail in this chapter. And then, of course, Sukadev Goswami is going to say, when you act in a, in a godly way, then you can go up to the heavenly planets, but again, you come back Ooh. after the after the karma is finished. Just like you go for a holiday, when money is finished, you come back to work. And then he's going to describe the universal form of the Lord and glorify the Lord's activities. So we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening and joining in. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Gaur Bhattavya Ki Jai Shri Mad Bhargavatam Ki Jai.